911 operators of Reddit, what were the most creative ways that people asked for help when they couldn't explicitly say it? Not an operator, but I worked at Domino's for a while and had an interesting experience. The customer ordered online and ordered 10 cokes and nothing else. It shows on the Maca line, but in bright red saying, no makeable items on this order, just to let you know it actually came through. I checked the delivery tag, and there were driver notes saying to call the police, he has drugs and guns. Naturally, I called, and they sent someone out, but to call the officer, if we heard anything else. A couple hours go by, and we got the exact same order, for the same address, but a different name and call back number. We called the officer, who told us he would check it out again, but unfortunately, I don't know what happened, but after the second order, we all started thinking it was some kind of prank. Wow. At first I thought this had something to do with that Tumblr post, where the guy bought like 7 cokes as a joke, and apparently there have been cases, where this has happened, and there was a legit situation. But the fact there was a second offer honestly makes this seem more prankish. There is an episode of the podcast Reply All where they talk about some weird phenomenon of people buying a single soda through the app for pickup then never coming to get it. It was happening to Domino's all over the place, and was apparently pretty well known by many employees all over the place. They thought that it had to do with people testing stolen credit cards, but I think they debunked that theory somehow. If I'm remembering correctly they never really figured out conclusively what was happening. In Ops case it sounds to me like swatting. I believe the conclusion that they settled on is that it was likely hackers somehow testing the online ordering system for vulnerabilities related to a customer data breach that had happened in Europe. Yes, the one person they were speaking to about it suddenly had to say that he could no longer comment after inquiring with some internal infosec people. I used to install security slash camera systems, mostly commercial accounts like banks, schools, hospitals, and police stations but also homes. When teaching them how to operate their system, they had to choose a safe word to give the operator in case of a false alarm which often happens. In the event of an emergency or hostage type situation we would teach them to intentionally give the wrong safe word. The operator is trained to ask for the safe word again for verification and they would again give the wrong safe word. The operator would then say something like thank you very much Mr. or Mrs. X and hang up, and then immediately dispatch the police. My gun club in the UK has an alarm system where there are two valid codes to disable the alarms and open the building up. One of the codes does just that, turns the alarm off, and lets you in. The other code turns the alarm off, and lets you in but also alerts the police who dispatch an armed response unit. This is in case the guy locking up at night, gets jumped and forced to open the building up. Interesting. Never heard of dual passwords. They also have one for, if someone challenges the employee to a shootout, or a dual password if you will. You know full well you're going to get gold for this, and I'm happy for you. Going I was reading a book by a famous poker player on poker, but there was this side incident in the introduction where the author and his wife faced this exact situation. The alarm went to the alarm company, while they were held at gunpoint. The operator asked for a 4 digit code, similar to safe word. The author's smart wife intentionally gave them the wrong code. The dumb operator kept repeating, oh, this code is wrong, could you please give the right one? I don't exactly remember how the situation panned out, but all I remember was no harm was done to them. May have lost some valuables. My dad accidentally did this once on our home alarm system. At 5am, Tyler, he entered the code backwards which is apparently a signal to the operators for someone holding me at gunpoint. About 10 minutes later we had armed officers at our door. My mom tried to explain the situation but they, rightly so, didn't take her word, and made us all go outside, interviewed us separately, and cleared the house. My dad is not allowed to touch the alarm anymore. I have a simply safe system and they have a separate code on the keypad as the panic code as well as a panic button itself. Theory behind it is that, if someone breaks in at gunpoint, and tells you to disable the system, punching the panic code makes it appear like it is disabled, but still sends a panic alarm signal to the operators. They also have the safe word when talking to the operators. I made my panic code something I have used previously, but not currently, so that I wouldn't have to think too hard if I ever needed it.
One day, on autopilot, I put in my panic code. I realized I put in the wrong thing, but when I called the alarm company they said they couldn't cancel police, because it was a panic code. When the police showed up, I was super embarrassed, and ran out to the front yard to meet them, and explained what an idiot I was. They got right back in their cars and drove off. Lucky for me, they didn't come inside to see my husband tied up in the kitchen. Totally kidding, but I could have been anyone. There is number 100%. The best would be to text someone and have them call us, but that isn't always possible either. Sometimes dialing and just lay the phone down so we can hear, then try to say what's going on. Why are you hitting me? Why do you want to kill me? Trust me. We listen to an open line like it's an FBI wiretap. If it's a landline, we will get an address. If it's a cell phone you are at the mercy of how well you cell phone provider pinpoints your GPS location. Cell phones with no active service and only call 9, double 1 are less accurate than one with service. If at all possible try to give hints to your location, you said it would be better when we move to ABC street, call the other pair I own by name. Pull the mad mama first middle last thing, sometimes we are familiar with the person. And now where to look, anything at all helps, why we are listening we are doing searches on anything we hear that is identifiable. Have officers driving the general location at ping to We try our very best to find you. Piggybacking, if your carrier allows wifi calling, set your location for emergency services. You can do it in the settings. But what if my location on device is on? Can you access that with same accuracy the phone tells me where I am? I have a registered phone number and a mobile device that came with it. We get GPS coordinates based on where you are in relation to the cell tower. Sometimes it's within a few meters, sometimes it's not. That's why if you can't say anything else try to get your address out, make sure small children know their address. Okay, but, let's say Veris and sold me the device. They have my email and all technical info of the device and my device location is turned on. I'm asking about tracking the device, not the call itself. I mean, it's way more accurate than triangulation of a call. Is it possible to use that? I read a story once about a woman and her child who were kidnapped, and she managed to call 911 while in the car with the kidnappers. She gave the operator hints about her situation by just screaming at her captors, while revealing stuff about her surroundings. Like, oh my god, where are you taking me? We just passed I-49, are we going north? What's happening? Where are you taking me and my baby? She's lucky the operator didn't dismiss it as a prank call, but I guess they must have training for those kinds of situations. Edit. I can't spell. B. Till operators have to follow up every call, whether they think it's serious or not. I didn't think operators were allowed to dismiss calls like that as a prank. Am I wrong? Edit. It's so sad to hear that people with such important roles aren't doing their jobs. Edit 2. Is it unreasonable to think? That these negligent operators should be charged with reckless endangerment or manslaughter or something worse? Is there any sort of precedent for punishing these scum? They aren't supposed to, but it happens. Once someone called in, after being shot in the head and the operator just got mad at them for pranking the dept, and chastised them before hanging up. I think they died sadly. There was the tragic story of the teen who got stuck upside down in his sub in a store parking lot and was slowly suffocating. The 911 operator dismissed his calls a couple times before dispatching police. Yes I read that also that was very sad he knew he was going to die he was telling the operator to tell his mom that he was sorry and that he loved her. As a 911 dispatcher for over 30 years now, I can say so many of you are misinformed. In 30 years I've had one person try to order pizza. This is by no means something they tell you to expect. You have to pray the dispatcher you get thinks to ask if you realize you called 911 and then asks yes or no questions. I've been mom a couple times. However in numerous small towns and counties, you will have people answering with little to no training. Some states have required tests, others don't. Most larger cities have their own training programs. A lot of times the new dispatcher is at the mercy of how well the person assigned to train them does the job. It's sad really. Was looking for this 911 dispatcher for 5 years now serving an area just over a million residents. 
This thread is full of people saying they've heard or read something somewhere, and in my time as a dispatcher, taking approximately 50,000 calls I have never once gotten the pizza thing. Typically it's a text to 911 in situations that wouldn't make a voice call possible, but if they do call they tend to be evasive slash vague or leave an open line after giving us our address, if we even get that. I really wish the whole pizza idea would go away as a story the public pushes. I'm on mobile. Formatting will be gross. Sorry. I'm not a 911 operator, but I once lived in a sort of shelter for pregnant women, and I got pretty close with one of the girls there. We had both moved from the shelter, but kept in contact, mostly through texts. This had to be maybe 2008 or 2009, so I had a landline and a cell phone at this time. Anyway, she calls me which was weird to me, because we normally texted. I answered and she asked if I had any money, because they were hungry. I said I had no way to get it there, because I didn't have a car at the time, but I would send a pizza there if she wanted. She said yes, and started thanking me profusely and something about it just seemed odd, so I asked if she was okay. She said no, but sort of in a funny way, like it was a normal conversation. I asked if she was in danger, and she says yes, I guess just pepperoni. So I'm freaking out, I ask if she wants me to call 9, double 1, and she asks her boyfriend in the background, if he wants something, and comes back to me, and says yeah that's fine. So I'm still freaking out, and saying I'm calling 911 are you sure that's what you want, and she just says yes, and keeps talking, like we're just having a normal conversation. Luckily, people commonly still had landlines, so I had 911 on the landline and her on my cell phone, and I had to keep going back and forth. Apparently her man had cut her with a knife, held a loaded gun to her head, and was essentially just losing his shit. She calmed him down enough to get him to let her call me, so she could try to get money for whatever. She was so smart to ask me the way she did. I think about her often, but we fell out of touch after his trial. I still think about you Hedy. Super smart on her end, and good on you for recognizing the situation, and getting her the help she needed. Thank you for that. I was young, so I don't blame myself for not recognizing everything going on with her and her boyfriend, but now that I look back I wish I'd picked up on everything sooner. Poor girl. Your story really inspired me. You did the right thing. She's still alive, and he got his, I hope. I definitely call that a win. You did the best you could. You saved her life.